here with Karen here, and uh, what we're going to do is a retreat root canal. She's having problems with a root canal that was done before. And uh, I'm going to start with a consent form. She needs to consent to the procedure. A retreat root canal is not as successful as a, root, a regular root canal. So she needs to know that going in. I'm going to tap on the tooth to see if it's still sensitive. And it is. This tooth has been sensitive for about a month and I tried a course of antibiotics and it didn't work. Sometimes that helps. So we're going to retreat that root canal. Put a little topical anesthetic on there first. I'm going to give her an injection of Articane 4%. I'm going to isolate the tooth with a rubber barrier called a rubber dam. She has a crown on that tooth. We're not going to take the crown off. We're going to drill a hole through the crown so that I can access the root canal system. Stephanie here is suctioning for me, helping me out. So we're going to go ahead and make a small hole in the crown, which I'll repair later. Now the first thing I like to do when I try to do a retreat root canal is I like to see if there's any additional nerve canals inside the tooth that maybe were not treated the first time the root canal was done. If there is a missed canal, that's often the reason why the root canal fails. That's, that's why the root canal doesn't work out. So I'm going to look for that first. Now retreat root canals are uh, a very complicated procedure and I'd recommend that a root canal specialist or a very experienced general dentist do this type of treatment. So we're going to go ahead and look for that if there is an extra canal in the tooth. I'm using magnification here, but uh, microscope would also be appropriate here for those who have a operating microscope. And in fact, there is a fourth canal. And the upper first molars are considered the most difficult teeth to treat. And often they have two canals in the mesial buccal root, which is the front root. So she in fact has a fourth canal. We measured that. Now we're shaping it with our rotary files. I'm going to irrigate with some sodium hypochloride. I'm going to try with my apex locator to establish the root length. And since the rest of the root canal looked fine on x-ray and I saw no other problems, uh, we're going to just treat this fourth canal uh, and I'm going to leave the other canals as they were. If you start retreating roots you know, that don't need to be retreated, you can create more problems than you solve. And the fact that she has a fourth canal that was never treated uh, that's the most likely cause of why she's having continued uh, discomfort in the tooth. That's what I'm doing here. If this had been a conventional retreat root canal, I would have actually removed the rubbery filling in each root. I would have removed the gutta percha and then reshaped and re-disinfected those other canals and filled them as well. But since we found a fourth canal. I'm just going to treat that canal the way I would treat any other uh, tooth I was doing root canal on. Here I'm going to take an uh, intraoperative x-ray so I can see if I am in fact into uh, that canal at the very tip of the root. Have Stephanie help me with that. She's going to go ahead and set that up for us and hit the x-ray button. I'll con continue to work while that x-ray is being developed. And here I can see that I am at the tip of that second mesial buccal root, and that is good. Again, you want a root canal specialist doing this type of treatment or a very experienced general dentist. I'm going to pre-bend the file a little bit. That helps you get around corners inside the root canal system. Still irrigating with sodium hypochloride. 
I'm going to dry the canal with paper points. I'm going to go ahead and try some gutta percha into the canal. Burn that off with a touch and heat. Burn the excess off. And Karen's doing fine under there. We're going to compact the gutta percha. What we do with the gutta percha is we use it to hermetically seal off the root so that no infection can get back in. We're going to use that gutta percha in a uh, gun dispenser now to top it off. We're going to go and condense that down. That's what I'm doing now. Stephanie is mixing the filling material to fill back the crown. We're going to use Fuji 9 here. I'm going to put that in there. I'll just smooth that down a little bit. Take the rubber dam off. Check her bite. Give her a warm towel to freshen up with. She had no problems. This was filmed several months ago. She's been fine. Uh, in fact, that missing nerve was the cause of her problem and the, the continued pain she had in the tooth. Yeah. It didn't hurt, did it? How no. Was that? Did you feel no. it? No. It doesn't hurt. You it never hurt me. It's just that my childhood dentist was What's a different story? life scarring. Oh, okay. So, so she, had, she had no problem with it and she was fine. Here we take an x-ray to uh, confirm the fill of that fourth canal. That's Stephanie doing that. Here what I'm going to do is change the angulation a little bit horizontally and what that does is that that should separate out the roots so that I can clearly see both roots in that mesial canal. And otherwise it can be superimposed. You can see here that the x-ray on the right shows the greater fill after the retreat in that front canal. And she's fine. No problems. This is a case that I did uh, in the past. Just to show you, you want to have the canals completely filled where you see those white lines inside the tooth roots. And also you can see that there's lateral canals filled. and. Often when we see a, uh, a solidly packed root canal filling with lateral nerve canals filled, that, that's generally considered a good sign. So when your dentist is looking at the x-ray and uh, he sees some of these things, uh, it's, it, it's generally a good sign that it's going to be a successful case.